So as if we haven't had enough new smartwatches in the last couple of months, Amazfit have just launched a trio of new wrist rockets and I've been rocking the two most affordable of them right here on my wrist the last couple of weeks and somehow still haven't been mugged. The GTS3 and the GTR3 will cost you €149, Euros, making them pretty affordable compared with a lot of other smartwatch rivals. They work with Android 7.0 and above, as well as iOS 12 and above. So here's my review of the Amazfit GTR3 and the GTS3, and a side-by-side -side comparison so you see which one might be best for you. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, the main difference between the GTS3 and the GTR3 is the fact that the S is square and the R is unsurprisingly round. As far as the design goes, that is actually the main difference between these two because both the GTS3 and the GTR3 uh, sport a aluminium alloy casing, which is nice and light. It's actually just under 30 grams here on the GTS3, just over on the GTR3. We're talking aircraft grade stuff here though. So these smartwatches are proper tough. After a couple of weeks being banged about, absolutely no wear and tear whatsoever to speak of on the casing itself or on the displays either, which is still completely scratch free. And of course, as well as being round as opposed to square, the GTR3 also has two shortcut buttons there on the right edge, whereas the GTS3 trims that down to just the one. Now these are both the black models, but the Amazfit GTR3 also comes in grey, if you like, whereas the GTS3 also has white and terra rosa colours, uh, both with 22mm silicone straps. Not the best silicone straps in the world, has to be said. Doesn't really allow your skin to breathe, especially if you are exercising in these bad boys. I did have a little minor reaction here on my left wrist. But you can quickly and easily pluck the straps from the casing like so and attach any standard 22mm straps of your choosing. And you can keep both these watches strapped to your arm when you hit the swimming pool. Uh, they've got full swim track and they are water resistant to depths of five atmospheres. Now, both of these Amazfit watches sport an AMOLED display. In the case of the GTR3, it's a 1.39 incher with 326 pixels per inch. In the case of the GTS3, it's 1.75 AMOLED screen with 341 pixels per inch. Now, of course, that makes it sound like the GTS3 has a much bigger screen. That's only because it's measured corner to corner. In actual fact, text and everything is about the same same size, clarity remains pretty much the same. Because they're OLED screens, you've got nice deep blacks, nice sharp contrast, even small text I found perfectly clear and nice and crisp as well thanks to the strong resolution. Reasonably punchy colours as well, which is good because a lot of the UI is quite colourful. And both these watch displays can hit a thousand nits as well, so I had no problem with uh, clarity when outdoors, even on a sunny day, could clearly see what was going on. I found the auto brightness worked pretty damn well. You can manually tinker with it if you need to, but I never really needed to bother with that. And it's pleasing to see that both the Amazfit GTR3 and the GTS3 sport a rotating crown as well, which you can use to flick through all the various menus and apps, as well as, of course, just the plain old bog standard touchscreen. As for the actual software, well, Amazfit likes to do things on its own terms. You don't get a bit of Google Wear OS or anything like that. It's actually the very funkily titled Zep OS. It's not my favourite of the uh, smartwatch UIs, but, it, you know, it does the job. It gives you fast access to all of your main information uh, right here with just a quick flick. It's got various tiles uh, that you can fast access in order to check exactly how you're doing, for instance, on your step goals and all your various other goals. You can quickly test uh, your heart rate, your SpO2 levels, all that good stuff. From the main watch face with a quick flick up, you can also access all of your recent notifications as well, so you can flick through and see exactly what people have been sending you. Unfortunately, then can't really do much with these notifications other than delete them. You can't quick respond or anything like that from the watch. If you flick down instead, you've got fast access to all of your major settings and toggles. So for instance, you can see exactly how much battery life you've got remaining. You can access the brightness toggles, do not disturb mode, theater mode, the torch, all that good stuff. Although again, not quite as good as the competitions. So for instance, whereas the Galaxy Watches allow you to quickly uh, boost the brightness or dim the brightness of that torch uh, using the crown, I just can't do that here on the Amazfit. But there is a lot of customization packed into Zep OS, so that's definitely a good thing. You can tweak the GTS3 and the GTR3, so the setup is basically how you want it to be. You can fully configure the likes of the control center, so only the bits that you actually uh, use are in there. You can set up a pane for extra security. You can also see what those top and bottom shortcut buttons do as well when you give them a quick push. And by default, the quick push of that top button will bring up the list of all of your available apps. You can quick access any of that. Most of them are fitness related, as you can see there. A few obvious bits as well, like alarms, calendars. And meanwhile, with the tap of that bottom button, you can jump straight into a good bit of exercise action if you're so inclined. Now, the time I shot this video, the GTR3 and the GTS3 both have over 100 watch faces that you can choose from, with matching always on displays as well. And you've got a selection of editable faces as well, so you can 
change up the information that appears on them. You can actually download more via the Zep app on your smartphone as well, either an Android phone or an iPhone. Just basically tap on the watch, go to store up at the top here, and you'll see there's a wide variety on there that you can play around with, some of which are absolutely batch bonkers and quite a lot of which are actually pretty good. Good mix of analog and digital stuff. The Zep app is also where you'll be able to download fresh apps for the smartwatch as well. As you can see, not exactly a massive selection available, nothing compared with what you get on the likes of Wear OS, of course, but some good stuff in there, including the pregnancy assistant, a good bit of BMI action, guide on how to brush your teeth so you've got proper clean toothy pegs. So it gives room for expansion, although I wouldn't hold your breath on many great new apps appearing on there anytime soon. And through the app is where you also set up all the notifications and reminders. Uh, you can basically change around uh, all of the settings on the smartwatch as well. Perhaps slightly quicker than actually doing it via the watch itself, so it's definitely uh, worth doing. And when the phone and the watch are all synced up, you can also check out all of your vital stats right here on the display, uh, including how well you've slept. In my case, it's, uh, it's a big old frowny face right there, not great. But the most stress levels surprisingly ain't too bad considering all of the tech in the world has launched in the last couple of weeks. It's pretty comprehensive steps, calories burned, yada yada. See on that side of things, definitely allocating on the permissions and all that kind of shenanigans. Definitely the uh, the Zep app, not the most user friendly, but you sort of get there in the end. Now both of these Amazfit watches actually have the Amazon Alexa Assistant built in. You can access it with just a quick swipe like so. Otherwise, uh, using one of the buttons as a shortcut. Let's give it a little tappy tap and ask for some vital information like how many Police Academy films did they actually make? And then, as usual, it is kind of a roulette as to whether you actually get a response that's useful or not, but here ho. Unfortunately, there is this annoying connection uh, lag every time you want to use Alexa. What's the weather like today? But once you do actually ask a question, uh, the response is usually delivered pretty swiftly. Uh, it's just a shame, obviously, there's no built-in speaker, so you can't get any voice response as well. If you want a built-in speaker, you'll have to upgrade to the GTR 3 Pro. So yeah, no vocal assistant feedback here, and you can't answer any calls on your smartwatch either. And sadly, while that GTR 3 Pro model can also store music locally, so you can uh, stream it via Bluetooth, you can leave your phone at home if you're going to be hitting the gym or, you know, doing a bit of jogging or anything like that, you don't have that functionality here on the GTR 3 or on the GTS 3. Uh, you do have a music app, but unfortunately that just allows you to control music that's actually playing on your smartphone. At least you do have comprehensive controls though, you can skip tracks, you can change the volume. Although once again, you can't use that rotating crown, uh, which is just a missed opportunity. Now this third generation of Amazfit smartwatches uses an updated chipset compared with the previous generation. And for the most part, the performance is decent, you know, pulling down that settings menu, dragging up the notifications, flipping through all of your various tiles and everything, reasonably nippy. And no problem running the various apps either, just a quick tap and you're basically straight in. However, I have noticed some serious lag when using that top button here on the GTR 3 in order to actually uh, go back to the main watch face. As you can see, a tap there, you could be waiting a good second or two before it finally pops up. Uh, usually the apps menu loads up nice and swift, but again, getting back to that main watch face just takes a bit of time. As for your fitness tracking, well, both the Amazfit GTR 3 and the GTS 3 use the same 6 PD BioTracker 3.0 biometric sensor. And as you would expect, this serves up 24 hour heart rate measurements as well as SpO2 measurements as well. You've also got your bit of daily pie tracking as well, which just makes me feel hungry, but it's essentially just a way of seeing how much decent exercise you do. And there's also a good bit of stress monitoring as well, which can tell you when you're freaking the fuck out. You basically just need to sit on the floor with your head between your knees and breathe. The sleep tracking I've already covered, it does seem to take a little while to kick in because I was in bed by about midnight uh, this day and it reckons I didn't get to sleep till about half past. I'm pretty sure I just passed out straight away, but it was a crap night's sleep. So a fair chunk of these uh, stats are probably pretty much on the money. And then the app can basically tell you off for going to bed too late and stuff, just like your mum. And it's good to see there is a cycle tracker on there as well and uh, some features that you don't typically find on these more budget-friendly smartwatches like a compass and a barometer. And I also like the one-tap measuring feature as well, which basically does exactly what it says on the tin. It measures all of your health indicators with just one tap, so you don't have to bother accessing all of them individually. So just a single poke, and then 45 seconds later, you can check out your heart rate, your stress levels, your blood oxygen levels, and your breath rate. And certainly any casual fitness enthusiasts will be happy enough for the Amazfit just for tracking your general outdoor shenanigans and indoor shenanigans as well. All kinds of different exercises are covered here. Uh, cycling, swimming, climbing, hiking. Most of the shiz you'll find down the gym, I would imagine. Skiing, etc. And those are just the main ones. There are plenty others to choose from as well, including slightly taking the piss 
board and card games. Now certainly chess uh, is a pretty good workout for the old heart in my case because I just get really pissed off with it but apart from that. Anyway we've got over 150 different sports modes covered and it can auto start tracking of uh, walking, uh, running, cycling etc if it does detect that you're doing any of that stuff and that seemed to work all right for the walk and certainly and when you actually come to start a workout first of all you don't have built-in gps here on the gtr3 or the gts3 only the gtr3 pro model has that so you'll have to upgrade if you fancy it and then once you get going uh, you'll have access to some of your vital stats as you're uh, doing your thing uh, of course that will depend on what your actual exercise session is so here on the running session you've got your distance you've got your current heart rate and your pace if you swipe down you'll also access even further information including your cadence etc and I do like how a quick swipe this way uh, gives you fast access to those media settings again so you can get your workout tunes blasting and then when you're all done just finish up and your stats will be recorded and saved with the Zep app. As you can see that's the longest run that I've gone on since I've been wearing the Amazfit watches and that fitness data can also be shared with Apple Health or Google Fit. Now let's finish with battery life and Amazfit reckons you'll get a full on 12 days of use at the GTS3 on a single charge and three full weeks 21 days out of the GTR3. However, I haven't dealt with the Amazfit in the past, I've deduced that their estimates tend to be a little bit on the optimistic side. So what you'll actually find is if you're using all of the features, including the likes of the always on display, you'll actually get around a third of that time. So around four to five days of use out of the GTS3 and around a week, seven days out of the GTR3. Now, of course, that is still very, very good compared with a lot of other smart watches out there. Certainly, like the Wear OS watches like the Fossil Watch and a Samsung's fresh new Galaxy Watch 4, they tend to get one day of use between chargers, maybe two if you can really stretch it and not actually bother to use them for anything other than telling the time. So yeah, certainly if you are looking for a watch that can keep you going for, you know, a long weekend or even a full-on week between chargers, then job done. And that right there is what I think of Amazfit's fresh new GTS3 and GTR3 after having them slapped on my arm for a good couple of weeks. And certainly if you want a, you know, basic fitness tracker, something that can give your arm a little buzz when a notification pops through on your smartphone, it's got a usual alarm, your timers, and even a good bit of Alexa support as well. These are two pretty affordable smartwatch options. And yeah, you are missing some key features that you'll find on more premium devices, like for instance, building speakers. You can actually hear the assistant talk to you. You can't actually take calls on this thing. Uh, local music storage as well, you can't do that. Built-in GPS. But if those are going to be crucial features that you are going to miss, you can always upgrade to the GTR3 Pro. Or otherwise, there are loads of great alternatives, such as that Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, the Fossil Watch Gen 6, uh, which I have reviewed right here on Good Old Expert. So if you've been using either of these Misfit uh, watches, otherwise the GTR3 Pro, it'd be great to hear your own review down in the comments below. Please do pug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a fan-bloody-tastic rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.